Hi guys, welcome back to a new video in this channel. Today we're gonna have a special video. I know, I know what you're thinking. It's like, why is Abraham skipping the freaking lighthouse? Why is he not focusing on it? Well, first I need to give you some uh, bad news. Uh, my wife and my little baby, uh, they are uh, sick right now. They got the flu or COVID or um, uh, we call it influenza over here. Like, we're not really sure what it is, but they're like really sick, uh, you know, headaches, they, their throat hurts, a lot of uh, uh, like snot and, you know, the, the whole deal. So we already took the test. We're going to see whether or not they're actually uh, infected with COVID or something similar. Um, but we need to wait for the results. And due to that, uh, we're only, it's only the three of us over here. So I'm taking care of them. I'm actually feeling a little bit sick as, as well. My throat hurts a little bit. Um, and that's why I'm, I'm not going to be able to do like super long videos, uh, probably today, which should be Thursday and tomorrow, which is Friday. Uh, on the weekends or in the weekend, I can promise you that we're going to have our portfolio review. We're going to do our very nice portfolio review for all of you guys. So make sure to check the link down here in the description to uh, submit your, your work so that we can get some nice reviews on, on Saturday and Sunday. And then next week, I promise, guys, next week we will go back into uh, the, the medieval lighthouse. And I'm going to try and have those five days be all about the lighthouse. Okay, so it's going to be another five like full days of lighthouse uh, modeling techniques. And, uh, and we're going to continue that. But hopefully you guys can be patient and uh, um, give me a little bit of uh, space there to, to take care of my family, which I'm sure you guys are always super understanding. I just wanted to let you know why it is that uh, we're changing the, the schedule. And we're changing it also because today they release uh, Seaverse 2022. They had the live stream earlier today and I was able to catch most of it. And um, there's some very, very cool tools. So if you navigate here into the into the Seaverse elements, you're gonna find uh, this guys right here, which is the Seaverse 2022. And uh, there's a lot of very cool things like this thing right here, the bass relief, where you're going to be able to take a sculpture and convert it into a, an alpha that's going to hold as much detail as possible and create like this bass relief thing that you would normally have to like hand sculpt. There's this uh, Pro Bevel or Bevel Pro plugin that's going to be, it's added. It uses Balkan graphics, so you're, you're going to have to check if your graphics card supports Balkan. And if it does, you're going to be able to use this one. I need to take a closer look at this one. I did see the, the live stream and I kind of understand where, where this is going and the settings, but I need to try it myself. I haven't had enough time to do so, as I mentioned <laughs> earlier, due to the, um, the due to the our current condition as a family over here. Uh, then this one right here that I want to show you because it's it's really cool. It's called the two by two, and it allows you to combine two alphas in a single brush. And it's very simple. Like right now, I have the clay buildup. It's just a cylinder with a couple of subdivisions. I'm gonna go into brush, and down here in the alpha and texture we can have two slots for alphas. So let's say that on the first alpha, I wanna have like this little sun right here. And on the second alpha, again, the brush, alphas, let's have like uh, something more unique, like this circle right here. So if I if I use the brush very softly with, with pen pressure, you're gonna see that we get, as you can see, the sun effect, right? Like you can see the sun. And if I go really heavily, we're gonna have the circle. So it kind of like blends in between them and it creates this very interesting texture. It's very similar, I think, to the to the Photoshop brushes when, when people do like digital painting and they have like double texture. Uh, so I think this is going to be really cool to add like detail, like uh, like noise detail um, and, and create some very interesting things. Like the first thing I thought about was, and I actually have a, a guy right here. This is one of the guys that we're using for uh, the hard surface uh, Seabrush, of course. So, so stay tuned for that one because it's, it's really, really close. So I was thinking, well, what if we were to go into like a standard brush and then go into the alphas and the first alpha we use like this skin brush and then the second alpha we use like this pore nose, right? Like this. Now, again, if we, if we go, let me give it a couple of divisions, probably like that. So if I go CSUV, I'm gonna be able to add this sort of like a weird noise, right? That's combining um, pores and and uh, and just like general like skin details. So so very very cool. I think I think this is gonna be a really really powerful tool. Uh, like combining two alphas, you can actually combine two textures as well. I don't find that as useful for my workflow right now because I don't usually paint inside of ZBrush. I use, uh, as you guys know, Substance Painter or even Marmoset. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you if you want to keep like your whole uh, workflow instead of Seabrush, I think that's going to be really, really cool. So yeah, as you can see, like having two different like elements is, is really cool. And if I go really, really soft, it's going to it's gonna go towards the first one. If I go really, really hard, it's going to go to the second one. So if, kind of, if you go kind of to the, like, the middle, then of course you're going to get like a like an in-between of, of both of them. So that's one of the new features, the two by two um, option where you're going to be able to have dual alphas or dual textures. And again, very, very cool uh, elements. 
Then there's this one. I, I didn't get the chance to see it uh, on the on the live stream because I, I was taking care of uh, Emma and Sarai. That's the name of my wife and kid. Uh, or the other way around. Sarai is my wife. Emma is my kid. And um, I was taking care of them and I couldn't see this. But this seems like it's a brush that's going to have the, the like a detail on alpha and or everything uh, that you're going to be able to quickly like apply uniformly everywhere, which usually, you know, when we when we would do this kind of things, like you would go into like a standard brush and then use your like drag rect and try using like an alpha, like, let's say that's uh, um, like this alpha eight, and then you would try to like match it, right? <laughs> right now I'm getting like two alphas. Oh, it seems like this two alpha thing is, is for both brushes. Interesting, so let's go, there we go. So this is what we used to have, right? Like we would try to do this. So it seems like that kind of solves the issue where you're gonna be able to just go over it. I'm gonna take a look at into it and I'll let you know, and I'll, I'll let you guys know how this works. Now, this one is an alignment tool uh, for subtools, which again, super, super useful, especially if you're trying to model things that are really, really exact or you want everything to be in the same place. I'll talk about this later. Not something that I, like, I don't have any example right now that could work. Um, but as you can see, like you press this button and then all of the subtools will align their like bounding boxes to whatever like orientation you have here. I think this works a little bit better for this kind of thing where you have like a scene uh, with different elements and you wanna make sure that everything is on the same plane or on the same wall or whatever. When you're doing like a character or a concept, or a concept maybe not so useful. And then this one, oh my God, I was super excited about this one right here. Um, and I was a little bit disappointed because I'm almost done with the ZBrush or Hard Surface uh, course and I'm gonna have to re-record a couple of things because this is a new tool. So the in the previous versions we had this knife curve, uh, which is the one that I've been teaching in the hard surface course, which uh, very quickly here, let me just dynamish this. It allows us to literally cut a piece of the object. So as you can see, we can create some very nice hard angles in a very, very fast uh, way uh, because it just like, literally cuts whatever you want. Uh, the problem was if you wanted to cut like a like a 90 degree angle like maybe, let's say like a box you would have to go here double top alt here double top alt here double top and you will have to do this sort of thing and as you can see it's not perfect like the angle <laughs> oh my god <laughs> oh that hurt oh. <laughs> that angle is uh it's not it's not perfect so now they added this a uh, knife wreck which i knew they were gonna add because they always do that they always add like the curve first first and then they do the like the circle and the square so this one look at this like a beautiful beautiful like uh, sectioning and partitioning of the of the things like you can see we can very quickly oh there goes the image. <laughs> you can really quickly cut things uh in and out of the element so uh yeah the, the we have the new uh square and circle uh knife brushes so let me uh, bring, uh, what else? What else do we have here? Uh, okay, this one, we've talked, I think we've talked about this before. We, we've talked about this when, when the 2021.7 release, I think, which is the interpolate. The only thing they added is the fact that you can now interpolate intensity, brush size, RGB intensity, and front and back, front and back color. So again, since I don't use colors that much, I don't think this is for me, um, but the fact that you can now interpolate intensity, brush size, and like pretty much everything from your stroke, that, that's pretty cool. And this one, this one is the, the last one that I want to talk about because this one is the one that I'm uh, testing right now, which is the X, XMD Toolbox. So for those of you that are new to the tree world, XMD has been around for a long time. And it's this uh, like resource that shares a lot of brushes, insert multi-meshes, uh, curve brushes, like materials, like... It's crazy, like the amount of things that these guys give for free, it's crazy. And uh, I always recommend my students to, to get this. And now they uh, release this thing called the X XMD Toolbox. So the XMD, well, didn't they, really, uh, they didn't release it. There's this thing called XMD Toolbox. I wasn't aware of it, by the way. And uh, what this does is it's a little software. Oh, I'll have to take a look at that one, but it's a little software. You install it, you download it, and uh, I believe you can just like launch it right here. And the XMD toolbox, uh, as you can see, it detects my uh, software. So let's say that one right there. And uh, let's say accept and install. So now, as you can see, we have all of these guys, all of these elements right here, all of this toolbox. Like any any brush that I want to use, I should be able to just double click and get it into ZBrush. Now let's give it a shot, like a quick shot here. You need to register. You're going to have to give them your email. You know, things are not always free right now. Uh, oh wrong one so it's zbrush 2022 remember this is a new install it's not the same one so if you download the zbrush 2022 and try to like update it from zbrush 2021 or if you try to go into your zbrush 2021 and use the updater to update it then uh, it's not gonna work um because it's a different zbrush so let's go back to there we go 
Uh, and the cool thing, this is the, the thing that they were announcing on the page, was that now you should be able to um, to go into, let's turn off perspective, to go into do, 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 document. No, there, they say there was a button here. File, here, in file, op open XDM toolbox, and it's the plugin. So yeah, that's fine, check it automatically. So now if I want, I don't know, like uh, let's say, uh, mesh insert uh, fit. Uh, okay, let's delete the sub tools. There's a lot of new things, guys. We're, we're gonna go over them because there's, there's some really cool stuff. So there we go. So now I, I just exit that one. So again, I can just go into file, open XDM tool, and let's see. For instance, uh, let's go for some like more interesting stuff. Uh, it has to be like the, that's chisel 3D, chisel creature, cloud wind. Actually, these are the defaults, right? I think these are the defaults. No, these are new ones. No, these are the defaults, right? Wait, where are the... Or is it... No, they, they seem to be new because I, I don't remember more. Like, it seems that some of them are the ones from Seabrush and then there's like some extra ones. Are they though? Huh, weird. So, I mean, I, I'm gonna have to take a look at this one as well because I mean, the toolbox is working. But I'm not sure. Okay. So there's alphas. Okay, so these alphas, I know that they're not in Seabrush. Like some of them are not in Seabrush. Where are the brushes though? There we go. So here they are, the first one. So all of these ones, like I know this insert, like barbed wire, insert belt. Like I know this are not part of Seabrush. If, if they were, I would remember them. So for instance, yeah, like this one, insert a bar wire. So I just grab that one and you can see it's this like rope that inserts a barbed wire. So if I need to do any sort of like environment and I want to add this uh, barbed wire around it, then there you go. So super, super cool thing about XDM. Now I'm going to show you one final tool and this one like literally blew my mind when I saw it. It's like this guy's, this guy's like crazy. They, they create, <laughs> they do some crazy stuff, my friends. So this is one of the uh, ogres that we're using this one for the hard surface uh, course, which is going to be releasing soon as well. Uh, I'll let you know more about it as, as we approach it. Um, but there's this thing that we we normally do when we mess up the scale, for instance, of the head, of the arms, or whatever. And let's say I messed up the scale for the head. So normally what we would do is we would use the mask lasso, we would mask the head, probably soften the, the mask a little bit, invert the mask, and then move the gizmo to like the, the neck right there, turn this thing on so that everything scales up or down, and then we would, uh, let's go to the center. There we go. And then we would just like scale down, right? And create like a like a proper head or, or scale uh, up depending on, on how we want the character, right? The problem is once we do that, we're going to have to fix all of these areas right here. And now this guy's, this madman created something amazing. Amazing. Like when I saw it in the, in the live stream, I was like, really? That's great. That's going to be so, so much fun. And you're going to have a lot of control now over your sculpture. So what we're going to do is now on the transform, like on this little gizmo right here, we can change the focal shift, right? Now, like previously in other versions, you didn't have control over the focal shift. So by default, the focal shift is gonna be set at minus 100, and that means that everything's gonna be modified the same. But if we move this all the way to 100, now you're gonna see that the deformation is gonna be occurring on a different, I think 100 is way too much. The deformation is gonna be occurring more on one part of the character than in others. So let me push this like, not all the way to 100, but like quite. So see how I can scale this, and it's only scaling the head. Let's scale this down, and as you can see, it's only scaling the head down. So I'm gonna be able to adjust the proportions. As you can see, the the torso, the shoulders, like everything, is is trying its best to like properly accommodate itself with the with the rest of the of the elements. Now it's definitely scaling it in this sort of like spherical way. It's not doing like a proportional scale. If, if I want to go back to like a proportional scale, I would need to like definitely turn this guy like down, and it's gonna be closer to like just like a traditional uh, focus. Shift. But yeah, I mean this is this is amazing, and as you can see, it works on all of the subtools. So all of the subtools are getting uh, affected at the exact same uh, time which again, that's really, really cool. So yeah, um, I, I don't remember how they call this, but it's like uh, it's like fall off transform or something like that. And uh, it works, it works amazingly. It's, it's, it's super, super cool. So that's it guys, this is it for this first video. Um, again, as I mentioned, probably tomorrow we're gonna have a short video as well. I might actually record it right now, like after I finish recording this, you probably are gonna see me with the same uh, cloth, uh, but that will depend on how my uh, my family uh, is recovering, okay? So that's it for this one guys. Uh, get Seabrush 2022, download it, try it out, see what else you can find, let me know in the comments, and I'll see you back tomorrow. Thank you, bye-bye.